we now look at example two. In this uh, situation, you are told that the steam power plant of example one is superheated to 500 before passing through the turbine. So this is shown in the temperature entropy diagram as rising from the saturation conditions to the superheated vapor condition. We are asked to calculate the thermal efficiency and specific consumption for this superheat cycle. And here we are asked to neglect pump work. So let's look at, first of all, the enthalpy that we need to compute at 60 bar and 500. Now the steam is superheated. So let's look at the steam table, superheated 500 degrees centigrade. We are now at the superheated region, and in particular, we are at page A7. So let's find our 60 bar. Okay, and if you recall, we are at 500 degrees, so let's go up to the top, 500 degrees, okay, and we need to get to 60 bar. So let's move on to 60 bar, okay, and what we have is uh, data which you can extract from the 500 degree temperature. Let's do it. As you can see, the 60 bar values, superheated values, give us that the enthalpy of the steam, remember the enthalpy is the third row, which is 3422.1. And while we are at it, we can look at the entropy, which is 6.802. So we record that down now. Okay, so at 60 bar, 500, we get 3422.1 enthalpy. <clears throat> we also note that the saturation temperature is 275.7, so 0.1 is superheated. Let's look at that uh, through the steam tables. Okay, if you notice the steam tables, uh, as we look at 60 bar, we will then be able to get the values which, with which we want. Going back to our early extracted data, we see the saturation temperature is 275.7. So as you can see, we are way in the superheated region. So we get the entropy. Again, we proceed. The entropy at 0.1 bar is the same as the entropy at 60 bar since this is an isentropic process. Exactly as example 1, the entropy at 1 bar clearly states, which is 8.150, clearly states that we are in the wet zone. So the steam starts out superheated and it comes wet but an interesting fact which we will see is, although it is wet, it has moved to the right. Not like the first example, the dryness fraction is now closer to 0.83 as we will see later on. 
Now, let's calculate the dryness fraction. We know our existing entropy using the data from the steam tables for point 0.1, entropy SF, entropy SFG. Let's go back to the steam table. Okay, we are at the wet region, steam tables. Uh, incidentally, we are at page A3 in the wet zone. So we home in on point 0.1 bar. And you can see the data for the entropy SF and SFG, which we extract out and we place it in our appropriate slots in the equation. We then get the dryness fraction of 0.831. Again, as in example 1, we use the enthalpy value from 0.1 bar. Our new dryness fraction, the enthalpy S, uh, HF at 0.1 bar is 192 kilojoules per kilogram, as you recall. And HFG is 2,393 kilojoules per kilogram. Compute it and we get our enthalpy now as 2,180.5 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, the rest of the sum, as we will notice, is identical to example 1. But let's uh, follow through with it. We note that H3 is HF, saturated water, 192 kilojoules per kilogram. And we are going to assume H3 is equal to H4, neglecting pump work. So we get the turbine work, 3422 H1. But now we have another enthalpy H2, different from our example 1. We get the work done as 1,241. Heat supplied now is exactly the same as example 1, 3230.1 kilojoules per kilogram. And the thermal efficiency now, as you notice, our work network has increased to 1,241. And the same heat input gives us a marginal but significant increase in thermal efficiency from our 35 percent which we had to now 38.4 the specific steam consumption is calculated and we get a slightly larger value sorry we get a slightly smaller value uh, and a smaller value signifies for the same kilowatt hour work we need less steam so we are in for a more compact steam plant. This ends the solution for example 2.